watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. This is Holy Ghost School training program again. We are here today to discuss a topic. Okay, so let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, O King of glory, we thank you, Lord God Almighty. We give you praise. We give you honor for another day which you have made. I rejoice and be glad in it. Our Father is not by might, is not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Spirit of the living God, take absolute control. I welcome you here. Have your way this afternoon because I know you have something for us, O Lord. I submit myself to you, O King of glory. Jehovah, have your way in the name of Jesus. Our Father, we thank you. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today we are discussing um, Holy Ghost School, a marriage covenant with the Lord. And we are starting with uh, Genesis. Genesis chapter 2, from verse uh, 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. 21, please. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Praise the Lord. The Lord said that it is not good for one to be alone, for a man to be alone. So God Almighty know, he understood the, you know, the power of companionship, the need, the importance of marriage. So from the beginning, he brought two people. He made Adam to be with Eve. Praise the Lord. And from the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, 22, it says that the Lord said, let us make man in our own image. God created things, everything, but the creation was not completed until he created man. So he created man for what? For fellowship, for relationship. So from the beginning, God Almighty wanted companionship with the human beings he created. Praise the Lord. And in Genesis chapter 3, Oh, uh, that's where man fell. After that, what happened again? God is still, he was still looking for relationship. He was still looking for a wife to marry. From Genesis to Revelation, you see that God has been searching for a wife, a true wife that will love him for who he is. And when a man is looking for a, 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 a woman to marry, the man is not just looking for somebody that will come and cook food, make food for him, or... Um, make uh, clean the home or take take care of other things he's he's looking for somebody that will give him companion somebody that will be with him in lack in abundance in sickness in everything in any condition so the lord wanted relationship so other things making food other ones they are they are they, are, they should be secondary because when god almighty when jesus chose his disciples he chose them he chose them to be with him first. He chose them to be with, with him, for them to learn him, for, for him to know them and they should know him, for him to teach them and show him his ways, praise the Lord, before he now send them out. For what? For, for miracles. Praise the Lord. You know, God wants this intimacy. This intimacy we are talking about. This marriage. This marriage intima intimacy. You know, intimate relationship with the Lord. He knew that things will happen at the end of the, you know, this end time. So many things are happening. And there will be lack. There will be hardship. There will be killings every, everywhere. So he was just trying to secure the, the marriage. The marriage. Praise the Lord. And any marriage that didn't start with love, any marriage that the foundation is not built on love, there will be a problem. That marriage will not, will, not, will not last. But if you start a marriage with love, uh, the trials of this life will come, storms, anything can come, but it will not affect it. Praise the Lord. So the foundation, the Lord just wanted to build that relationship because he knew that and time will come when people will be in pain. So if you come to him with, you know, if you come to him because of what you can get from him, that marriage will not stand. 
But if you are coming to him because of love, that is the only time you can endure this end time. All these things that are happening everywhere. Praise the Lord. So the Lord is searching for a true love. So in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, when man fell, you know, the Bible recorded that the Lord comes in the cool of the day to do what? To stay with his people. Praise the Lord. But the man fell already. They were not there. And uh, that's, that's where the relationship, you know, scattered. Uh, but when they, were, they, when they were together, they loved, the unity was there. But when serpents came and, you know, deceived them, they were now, you know, they were blaming each other. Instead of when, when the Lord came, out, came about, what Adam should have done is to, oh, daddy, I'm sorry, I missed it. My wife, you know, or even if the, if, the, if the love is there, he will even take it upon himself and say, Daddy, I messed up. Period. Please forgive me. And God would have forgiven him. But because that broken, that, that love, that unity has been broken, they were playing blame games. Praise the Lord. So the Lord now was, you know, the, the, that, that's where the, the wickedness of the man started. The wickedness started from this world. So this brings us to what covenant time. I say the Lord comes in the cool of the day to meet Adam. Praise the Lord. So that is their covenant time. At a certain time. So they come together with the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the Lord now swore to do what? To destroy the world he created. But Noah found grace in his sight. So he... He, he started with, with Noah again because in, it, in each uh, generation you will have one man, you know, one man left to start with. So from Noah now, he got to Abraham. I'm not going to read all the scriptures. So that's how the covenant started. This covenant we are talking about, he entered with Noah from there, Abraham. He told Abraham that his, uh, his children will, will be slaves in a foreign country. But after that, they will come back. They stayed for 400 years. We all know that. Praise the Lord. So after that, Genesis. Can you give me um, Jeremiah 32, please? Let's look at Jeremiah 32, 38 to 40. Praise the Lord. So these people, when they came back from the bondage, after Moses has gone to bring them, so these people the, the 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 covenant god entered with abraham is that his descendants his children this generation coming generation they will be his children and he will be their father so let's look into it jeremiah 32 they shall be my people and i will be their god then i will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and their children after them and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from doing them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. Praise the Lord. This is the covenant that he will be their God and they will be his children. And in some way, the Lord said, he is their husband and he is their husband. Praise the Lord. He is their father. And these people, they enter this covenant. And what is covenant? Covenant is an agreement. Covenant is an agreement. Agreement with, between two people or more than. Praise the Lord. Is an agreement. And marriage is what? A union between two people. A man and a woman. According to the Bible. Praise the Lord. So these people enter the covenant. To them, that they will be the children of God and God will be their father. Praise the Lord. And let's see. Let's look at uh, Exodus 32 from 1 to 4, please. Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us for as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has come of him. And Aaron said to them, 
Break up the golden ear earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold, gold from their, their hand, and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then he said, This is your God, O Israel. That, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Praise the Lord. These are the people that entered covenant with the Lord. You know, so in Exodus 20, that's, that's where God gave them his commandments. And here, these people, they broke it. They broke the covenant because they couldn't see their leader. To them, their leader was wasting time. They didn't know if Moses was gone. If he was dead, then they couldn't wait. Impatient. So they couldn't wait and they said, Aaron, make us a God. So they broke that covenant. Praise the Lord. Let us look into Hebrew. Hebrew chapter 8. Okay. From 8 to, from 7 to 12. For if that covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawlessness. This I will remember no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this is the covenant the Lord say I'm going to have with them. This is a new one. He said he is going to be their God again and they shall be his children. And he will be the one teaching them. That they don't need to go to any man to teach, to teach them. So that is what the Lord is calling us. Come in and he will forgive the unrighteousness. The Lord is calling us for this covenant, for this covenant marriage. Praise the Lord. That is only the covenant that will do what? That will take us to the inner. You know, making heaven. If, you are, if your goal is to make heaven, if your goal is to be this bride that the Lord is coming back to take, you enter into this covenant. Praise the Lord. Marriage. Marriage, this marriage covenant is the one that brought us into this intimacy, this closeness. Because, you know, you know, intimacy is not just a dating. It's a gradual process. It's a gradual process. Praise the Lord. So, when you come to, like somebody wants to date somebody, and you, you marry somebody, the person will begin, they will begin to date each other, to study each other, to see if it's going to work. Praise the Lord. Can I have um, Ruth, chapter 1, 15 to 17, please? Praise the Lord. And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, this is the kind of love the Lord is looking for. Just look at uh, 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 Ruth. That, that woman, what can she get from the old woman? The woman that is old. She was old. She lost the, 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 the husband, lost the two, two, two children. He is not, uh, she is not ready to get married. 
But this this woman, she didn't. There is nothing she can gain from Naomi. Play, praise the Lord. There is nothing she can get from this woman. But she vowed not to leave this woman. It was love, 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 love. That is the un, you know, unconditional love, undiluted love, undiluted. And this is the kind of love the Lord is looking for. Is searching for you and I. Praise the Lord. So the Lord is looking for that woman that will do what? That will be for him. That will stand by him. That will stand for him. That will not betray him. Can you imagine this route? There is nothing. This woman, you know, she was not thinking about gaining anything from the, the, the woman she was following, the mother-in-law. It was just love. Just love. Praise the Lord. So this is, these are the people the Lord is looking for. Um, Ephesians. Let's look at Ephesians. Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Husband, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any church thing, any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How can you maintain this? How can you be washed? How can you be blameless? It's only when you start coming to this covenant marriage we are talking about. When you come every day to him, to that covenant time, the word, he'll be speaking to you. The word of God, the voice, his voice you are hearing, is the things that will be cleaning you, purifying you, preparing you for the wedding, for the glorious wedding that is coming. When you come in his presence, you spend quality time Spending quality time with the Lord, that is the only way out. He will begin to know you, you begin, you begin to know him. You begin to know his heartbeat. You begin to reveal his will for you. Praise the Lord. You see, Naomi, I will use Naomi as a, an, a root, as a, as a case study. You see, that woman, she, she, she just, oh, she was in obedience. She obeyed when she took her, when she followed the mother in law. She obeyed that woman. Everything and anything the woman told her, she did. And this is what the Lord is searching for. That one that will be obedient to him. That one that will obey him. That wife that will not nag. That wife that will not push him away because, oh, he, he prayed. She prayed. He didn't answer. No. The Lord is looking for because, you see, if this love. When, you, when your marriage is built in love, just like the Lord is talking about, he says, if you love me, obey my commandments. So loving him with all of our hearts, loving him with our souls, with our mind, you cannot see any prayer that he has not answered. Because love covers multitude of sins. You know, if you love this God, that is what he's looking for. So we have to, we have to draw near in this covenant, in this journey. So brethren, I don't know if you have started your covenant time. I don't know if you have entered this Holy Ghost school. Please, we are praying that you start that. There is no more time. There is no more time. Let's look at uh, Revelation chapter 19, 19, 6 to 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Praise the Lord. You see, are you the wife? Are you ready for this glorious wedding? Have you made yourself ready, church? Wife, have you made yourself ready for the master, 
for your husband. He is coming to take you home. Praise the Lord. And how do you do all this? Is working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2, 12. And he's coming every day. Coming every day in his presence. Because when you come, his light, the light will, will bring out every darkness in you, the vice in you, the vice in us. That is what the light is bringing out. And you begin to deal with it. Those things that will stop us from making heaven, those things that will stop us from this glorious wedding, that is what the Lord is doing. What is calling you and I to come to him. So let him purge us by spending quality time with him. Then you continue to die every day. The Bible says, carry your cross. Apostle Paul said, I die every day. 1 Corinthians 15, 31. So, and they're allowing the Holy Spirit of God to lead you in everything. Romans 8, 14. Allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you and the inquiring from the Lord everything. Anything you want to do, you make inquiry. You ask the Lord about it. Can I do this? The Bible said, call unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So, you walk your salvation with fear and trembling. This is the, the way you can search yourself every day. Remember our regular scripture, Psalm 139, 23 to 24. You use it to search yourself every day. Praise the Lord. Maintaining your altar. You know, Exodus 25, verse 8, the Lord said, make me. Tell them to make me a sanctuary that I'll dwell among them. So your body is the sanctuary of the Lord. My body is the sanctuary of the Lord. The temple, the altar we carry about, that is where we carry our father. That is where we carry our husband inside. And you, and you know, Holy Spirit, he's a righteous God. Holy, he is holy. He is holy, so his dwelling shall be what? Shall be clean. No husband will come into a, 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 dead, a dirty home and they will not uh, be angry. Any husband that comes home and the, and the wife, you know, the house is not put in order, is not clean. That man will not be happy. So that is how, the, you know, you carry your body, your, your temple. You are the temple of the Most High. Praise the Lord. You are the sanctuary. I say, you are the sanctuary of the Lord. His dwelling place. He is holy, you know. You have to keep it holy. Purge your heart every day. Purge it because at times we have thought, you know, the thought, you know, defies the, the, the temple of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And as you come to him, he will purge you. Ezekiel 8, Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 6, he talks about, you know, when the Lord was showing Ezekiel the great abominations, the house of Israel. They are committing in his sanctuary. And he says that these are the things they are doing to, to make him go far, far away from his sanctuary. So brother and sister, what are you doing to make God to go far away from the sanctuary? That is, your, that is his dwelling place, the temple, your body, your heart. Is there anything you're doing that you're using to pursue him? To make him to go far away, please return back. Purge your heart. Purge your heart. Please, if I can get um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 to 17, I would appreciate that. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of, the go of God dwells in you? A question. If anyone defies the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? Praise the Lord. This concludes everything. Solomon said, let's see the conclusion of everything. The conclusion is here. Do you not know that you are the temple of God? Your heart is the place you carry him. And the Bible says, anyone that defies that temple, the Lord will destroy. Praise the Lord. Please, brethren, search your heart. Clean that heart. That is the dwelling place of the Lord. So that this marriage, this glorious, this glorious wedding that is coming, you will be that bride that is ready. You will be that bride that is ready. 
come back to your father. If you have not given your life to Christ, Please accept him because he died for you. He died for all of us. Make him your Lord and personal savior. Accept him. If you have not, uh, if you have not done that, please can you just re re repeat this uh, prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal savior. That's it. The most important thing is having time with him. Make a covenant time with him. Congratulations, you are saved. But you have to work your salvation with fear and trembling by what? Drawing near. So start this school. Give God your time. That time at the same place, at the same time, every day. That is the only way that marriage covenant will be sweet. It will be communion. So may the Lord bless you. And may his face shine upon you. I pray that this message will bear fruit in your life. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you that if there's any route you have taken that is not the way of the Lord, may the Holy Spirit redirect your path so that you will not miss it. Key into this relationship, this intimacy we are talking about. And may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV Impacting the world for Christ